I am super excited and I'm gonna do my best to talk clearly and slowly because what is about to get poured out on you um, is gonna be more than you will be able to handle. I am just gonna say that right now because it is so much that came so quick. Ah, oh, I could scream. I love when the Lord does this. Um, but I just need you to know this. You may have to watch it again. You may have to write stuff down. Um, and and if that's not where you are and you, you cannot, it is okay. Just take this and let the Lord teach you this. So I um, took a few minutes just really quick. Just had some questions going in my heart. And I asked the kids if I could just sit down for a few minutes and Jay and just read. And I flipped open to Psalm 90. And remember how I said it is... Um, that verse that said it is the glory of God to um, to hide and it's the glory of kings to search it out. Uh, he has so much hidden from, for us in here and it is not hidden from us. It is hidden for us to tell us what's going on in this time, to tell us that he knew that he is here. And I'm going to show you one of these awesome ways that he does this. So I'm in Psalm 90, flipped open. And I have this verse underlined. So my, my eyes went to and it's Psalm 90, um, verse 4. And um, the author of this is actually Moses is praying here and he said, talking to the Lord, you've been the dwelling place for all generations before the mountains were brought forth or you had ever formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, return, O children of men, for a thousand years is in, in your sight or like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night. And I get there and I'm like, a watch in the night. I've heard that. A watch in the night. And, um, sorry, I've had ones in trying to keep <laughs> the distractions that are life in my life. Um, so I can, okay, so a thousand years in your sight. So in his eyes, a thousand years is like a watch in the night. And instantly he reminded me, Matthew 15. Matthew 15 is the story of when the disciples were on the water and this, um, they were afraid, right? Jesus comes walking to them in the darkest hour, it says in the fourth watch, Jesus comes walking to them, right? Okay, so we've we've established that in God's eyes, a thousand years as is as a watch, right? A watch. Now, Jewish terms, just so you know, a watch, um, you're going to learn a lot when you study the Bible super quick here. In Jewish times, there... Um, their day started at 6 p.m., okay? And a watch, when they say the third watch or the fourth watch of the night is a three-hour time block. So from 6 to 9 p.m. would be a first watch. 9 to 12 would be second watch. 12 to 3 would be third watch. And 3 to 6 a.m. would be the fourth watch. It's the darkest hour when Jesus came to them, right? And he came to them in the fourth watch of the night. And what he showed me in this, <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. I, I'm on Psalm 90, the very next page, Psalm 91, and it hits me, the darkest. We've, we've all, without even having any prophetic voice out there in the spiritual world right now, those of us that are the Lord's know that this is probably one of the darkest times in history that, well, it for sure is, that we have ever seen, um, let alone the church of, of Christ as a whole, right? So we're walking in this and Isaiah talks all about this, when the darkness that's on the earth, right? This deep darkness, arise, shine, for his glory will be seen on you. So we are walking in this darkness. And the very next ver page I'm on is Psalm 91. Psalm 91, I'm just gonna insert this here. If you don't know it or haven't heard it, um, many Christians are coming to really understand the fullness of what God had for us, um, especially in this time with the COVID and all this going on with Psalm 91. Okay, it is uh, famously known as the Psalm of Protection, and it starts out with, "He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, for He is my refuge and my fortress. In my God, in Him I will trust. Um, surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will take refuge. His truth will be your shield and your buckler." Now it goes on here to say all the things you shouldn't be afraid of. And verse 6 says, nor, so we're saying you shall not be afraid of the pestilence that walks in the darkness. So darkness, right? We have darkness. We have the fourth watch of the night, the darkest hour. We have this pestilence that walks in the darkness. Pestilence speaks of what? This plague, right? That you look up that word. Pestilence here, like I'm thinking... Um, what we pesticides that we put on for bugs and things that travel, right? Like we literally have 
a super bug that's that's going all over. We say, so you shall not be afraid of the pestilence. I'm losing my place. That walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. And I love looking up words and seeing what they mean when they were actually written. Not what we say now, but what they were actually written. So, nor the ruin that devastates at noonday, right? So I see this. I told you, you're going to go a whole lot and we're going to unpack it after. So take a deep breath. At noonday, if we're going to go by the 6 p.m. start time, 6 p.m. to 9, first watch, 9 to 12, second watch, 12 to 3, third watch, 3 to 4, the fourth watch, right? The Lord said in Psalm 90 that a thousand years in his sight is like a watch. Now, this is... We're going to come at this together with the agreement that God's word is true from the beginning to end, that we will not interpret it based on what science likes to try to figure out, how on earth this world could have happened um, in the timeline that God says. They blow it away. We think that we have to understand science. I just, I just need you to hear this. Science is amazing. Science was created to prove God not to prove the lack of it, which is what most people think it is, right? They're, they think that science is going to prove God wrong. Science will never prove God wrong. There is the Louvre in Paris. You all know that museum. It is also a library. It has, hmm, got to look it up, at least three and a half miles of old science textbooks that are kept in the basement there. Of old science textbooks of things that have been proven wrong, when they learn it, they put the old one there and they learn what's new, okay? So science is not God. And when it tries to disprove him, he will not be disproved. So if we go as, if we hold true that God's word actually meant what it said when um, things were created and, and all the things in it, then biblically speaking, we know that Adam was created, the world, around 4,026 BC. Okay? How many thousand years is that? 4,000 years after creation, the fourth watch, right? Because a thousand years is a watch. Who comes? And the darkest time of history, Jesus. Jesus came to them on the fourth watch of the night, right? Jesus comes to earth, 080, right? Right around there, give or take a few years. Jesus comes on the scene in the darkness, in the fourth watch he comes. But Psalm 91 talks about the destruction that devastates at noonday. Well, I'm going to extrapolate this here. I don't think in Jewish cultures, they, they talk of any more watches than the fourth watch because it's all night. But let's go forward. So if we start at 6 p.m., we know that we get all the way back to 6 a.m., that's the fourth watch. We're going to take two more watches, two more sets of three. 6 a.m. to 9 would be the fifth watch. 9 to 12 would be the sixth watch, right? Because that's noon, noonday. So number six would be the sixth watch. 1,000 years is as a watch. 6,000 years after the beginning, where's because the beginning of creation, right? We've already discerned was 4,000 years before Christ came. So 2,000 years after Christ came is now, people. <laughs> you shall not be afraid of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that tries to destroy everything at noonday. Right now, the Lord is telling you he knew this was coming. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid, people. I want you to hear this. I think it's so beautiful. Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verse 25. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking, they were troubled. They thought it was a ghost and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke and said, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Now, this is when Peter wanted to see if he really was who he said he was. And he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And he said, come. And when Peter had gotten down out of the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. We know this story, right? But then he got afraid. And Jesus had to grab him. And they both got in the boat. And it says, immediately when they got in the boat, the wind ceased. Jesus comes on the scene 4,000 years after creation in the darkest, in the fourth watch, the darkest time. And he says to them, do not be afraid. It is I. He's telling us at noonday 
the sixth watch, Lisa creates a sixth watch, 6,000 years after creation, 2000 AD, the pestilence that comes in the darkness, don't be afraid. Why? Guys, I need you to hear this. We are not not afraid because this doesn't exist. We're not not afraid because it's a hoax. We are not not afraid on the other side because we wear a mask. We are not not afraid because one day soon they're gonna have a vaccine. All of those, we're gonna pick those up and put those over here. You and me, child of God, we are not afraid because the Lord, Yahweh, came down. And because he looked us in the eye, God put on flesh and looked us in the face and said, do not be afraid, be of good cheer, it is I. They had to welcome him into the boat. That's all they needed to do. And as soon as they did, the wind that was against them stopped. There is a lot of things against us right now in this world. A lot of things, more than just COVID. We have people losing jobs. We have fears about family members that we can't see because of their immune compromise. We have what to do with our children this year and those that have to work outside of the home. We have a lot of things, but we have the Lord who came, the Lord who knew about this day and the Lord who said, do not be afraid. I'm gonna leave you with this. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Don't be afraid. But the deep and the deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. So lift up your eyes all around and see. Lift up your eyes. Do not be downcast. You do not have hope like the rest of the world has hope. Your hope, child of God, is an unshakable, unshakable hope, unwavering hope that is not in the waves of the sea around you. It is on the one who wants to get in your boat and cause the chaos to stop. Do not be afraid. It is I, he says. It is an awesome time to live. Don't ever forget it.